Good morning, students! This is TV Escuela of DepEd Davao de Oro, a fun and exciting way of learning. Welcome to our Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction class. How are you today? I hope you're safe and you're doing well in answering your modules. Before we start our discussion, let me introduce myself first. I am Teacher Jestoni Gutierrez Carmona from Mabini National High School, Mabini District, your teacher in Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction. Now, I will be showing you images and spot the hazard. We have the first image. And the second image. Have you identified the hazards in those pictures? If your answer is yes, well done! One potential scenario that can occur due to the presence of hazard is that the books might fall from the shelf and may hit somebody if earthquake occurs. Before proceeding to our main topic, let me give you first our lesson objectives. Number 1. Define vulnerability. Number 2. Determine what makes a community vulnerable or not. Number 3. Assess events situations delicately to identify vulnerability level and coping capacity and ability. This time, since being safe and protected is the number one goal of every family, let us conduct an ocular inspection of your house and backyard to ensure your family's safety against hazards and disasters. Are you done inspecting your house and backyard? Based on your assessment from the tour that you made, how will you define vulnerability in your own words? Well, as we go on, we will be able to define vulnerability even further. According to Republic Act 10121, also known as Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Act of 2010, vulnerability is defined as the characteristics and circumstances of a community that make it's susceptible to damaging effects of hazard. In other words, it is a state of being at risk. Additionally, vulnerability is situation specific. This means that if a specific province is prone to earthquake, it does not mean that all localities on that province is vulnerable to it. Further, the vulnerability of different towns or provinces differ in the way they prepare for the hazard and the amount and type of resources they have to prevent and manage it. To lessen vulnerability means to make the community prepared and ready for the possible damaging effect of the hazard. Thus, people must be resilient. So, to develop resiliency at home, you should first identify the hazards and be prepared all the time for possible outcome and respond immediately. Lastly, vulnerability is also hazard specific. A community that is vulnerable to earthquake hazard does not necessarily mean that it is also vulnerable to typhoons. Hazards have different traits that can influence the disasters possible to happen. Let me read to you a situation and assess who among our characters is most vulnerable. Nick and Gary, who were neighbors, are both students of Luok National High School. Due to the forecasted typhoon the night before, they waited for the announcement of class suspension. Unfortunately, there was no announcement. 
Nick decided to go to school bringing his books, notebooks, and laboratory materials. On the other hand, Gary also decided to go to school bringing not only his books, notebooks, and laboratory materials, but also flashlight, whistle, and some supplies of food and water. Due to bad weather, the school janitor blocked off the entrances and exits because the grounds were flooded. So, Nick and Gary were stranded in a covered court near the school. Both were trying to call their family. But the signal is down. End of story. Now, who do you think is more vulnerable? Nick or Gary? If your answer is Nick, you are definitely correct. Gary brought supplies such as food, water, flashlight, and whistle, which makes him less vulnerable. Let me ask you these questions. Number one. Based on the story given, describe what could possibly happen. Number two. What have you realized from their story? Number three. Could it be possible that both students are exposed to the same hazard but they can have different level of vulnerability? Please bring out your pens and notebooks and write your answers on the questions given. Answers vary on how you perceive the questions. I will now ask you another set of questions and try to reflect based on your current situation. Number one. If you are going to consider all the hazards that you identified in the activity, do you think your place can be considered safe or not? Number two. With all the hazards that you have identified, who do you think among your family members will be most affected? Answers vary on how you perceive the questions. To wrap things up, each family member has different level of vulnerability. It is best to assess the place where we live in and identify the possible hazards if disaster comes along. Were you able to understand vulnerability? I hope you do, and I hope you internalize and understand the lesson discussed today. Are you ready to take your assessment? That is great! I know you are all excited to answer our quiz. To evaluate your understanding regarding the topic, answer the following questions. Choose the letter of the best answer. Number 1. A community with high level of vulnerability and high hazard has A. High disaster risk B. Low disaster risk C. Medium disaster risk and D. None of the above Amazing! The answer is letter A. High disaster risk Number 2 Which of the following groups of people is more vulnerable to disasters. 
A. Men, boys, and all people. B. Men, women, boys. C. Women, children, old people. And D. None of the above. You get it right! The answer is letter C. Women, children, old people. Number 3. Which statement best describes vulnerability? A. Vulnerability can cause the loss of life or injury, property damage. B. Vulnerability is potentially damaging physical event, phenomenon, or human activity. C. Vulnerability can generate social and economic disruption. And D. Vulnerability is the susceptibility of an individual or group of people on the impact of natural hazard. Absolutely! The answer is letter D. Vulnerability is the susceptibility of an individual or group of people on the impact of natural hazard. Number 4. It refers to the community's ability to reduce vulnerability through prevention, mitigation, response, and recovery. A. Hazard B. Disaster C. Resiliency and D. Risk That is great! Letter C is the correct answer. Resiliency Number 5 Risk is a situation where in a community is being exposed to danger. What are the two factors that affect the risk level of a community? A. Alert and alarm B. Hazard and threat C. Hazard and vulnerability and D. Vulnerability and susceptibility Incredible! The answer for number 5 is letter C, Hazard and Vulnerability. Did you get a perfect score? Good job, students! That's all for today. I hope you have learned from our lesson. Thank you for watching. Once again, I am your Disaster Readiness and Risk Reduction Teacher. Gestoni Gutierrez Carmona of Mabini National High School, Mabini District, saying, Dito sa TV Escuela, sa pag-aaral, sama-sama! Bye-bye!